We bought this old rusty pig trailer to turn into a tiny house. What do you think about it? Rough. In previous videos, you could see us stripping it and putting in the walls. And in this video, we're gonna make it waterproof. And we're also gonna continue clearing the road we started last week, so we could have an emergency exit in case of wildfires. Welcome to a new project camp update. Okay, time to get started inside the trailer. However, we noticed it's not that easy to get in. Yeah, we could use the stairs before getting started. So that's why we need the ladder. Here we have our beautiful ladder, that we, our stairs, uh, that we found at the scrapyard. Since it's needing a bit of a touch-up, we'll cut it at a right, de right degree angle and then most likely weld plates to it so we can secure that. Shouldn't be too much trouble. It's gonna be a fun one. What are you doing up there? <laughs> Setting a GoPro for you. <laughs> oh, thank you. I don't know if you know this, Robert, but it's a bit too high. A little bit. <laughs> but it's okay. For now, we're gonna just make two posts here with beams and another step. So yeah, let's make that. The ladder is in place and it feels sturdy. Let's go to the next step. Okay, so we want to start putting the roof uh, in, uh, but for that we have to put this vapor barrier, install it. Also, we have to finish the windows and the door. So we are going to be doing two processes at the same time. Uh, two people are going to be working on the roof. One is going to be finishing the windows. So, yeah. We start setting up the foil. For the insulation that we will add later, we are going to try out a new kind of material. Insulation made out of old textile and clothes. Seems like a nice way to reuse those materials, but the downside is that this material cannot get wet or else it will get moldy. So we need to add this new waterproof layer or vapor barrier to make sure it stays dry. Feels nice to use recycled materials, but we don't like adding this new foil. Let us know what you think about it in the comment section. Anyway, for now, we're going to give this a try. Well, let's see if we can even manage with this wind. So we're struggling a bit. The wind is just <laughs> blowing all the time the, the tarp into the trailer and throwing our GoPro off. So I think we're gonna start folding and then we just finish this last part here because it's just impossible with the wind and this way. Now that the foil is all rolled up, Voucher can continue with the windows. <laughs> right, foiled in. We have a little water repellent edge so the water cannot run in. But still, there was a bit of a hole here which would leak, so I'm going to patch it with. Left over. And what we put behind the other foil, so where water runs from here, it will run off and doesn't creep in between these two layers.
Good. We got this aluminum sheet when stripping the trailer before. It was on the back of the door. It's a bit too hard to reuse like this. It's all bended and bumpy. So we're going to use smaller parts to make the edges of the windows. This will make sure the rainwater will flow out. So, first rafter we're gonna put in. We have the metal, uh, well, the vapor barrier, and yeah, we're gonna start putting the rafters in. The first one. So what are we doing here? We're gonna even out the beams. We just put all the rafters in, but we don't really are measuring if they are all uh, sticking out the same amount or the same size. So right now I'm gonna mark this first beam, 10 centimeters, and then the last one there. Drive a nail in, and then just, we don't have a chalk line, but we can use a rope and put the rope and just mark all the beams at the exa exact size. So yeah, it's much faster. Sounds good. Video maker advice. Always keep an eye that the microphone is not in the frame. Right now, this line is straight. And the beams are sticking out a bit. So yeah, we're gonna mark them and cut them off flush. It took a while to cut all the tips of the rafters, but finally they are in. Next step, we will be putting wood boards on top and also placing the windows. But for all that, we first needed to get materials. Doing good. We want to make this trailer with as much secondhand materials as possible, but it's quite hard to find all things around here, especially if you look for sturdy decent things. There just aren't many people or companies doing this, so it always takes quite some time to find some. But we found a few places close by that might have something, so let's have a look. First up, a place with wooden windows. <laughs> We found the first one, but unfortunately, they didn't have more at this place. Muito obrigado. Ciao. So, let's try another place to find the rest. Let's 
find some windows for the pig trailer. Most people in Portugal have aluminum frames in the windows, so we found a place that they make windows, but they also replace windows, so they have leftover or second-hand windows. But they also have here a stash of old wooden windows that they just used to burn in the wash pits to heat up in winter the place. They don't like wood. They don't like wood, like the old times. I would. We found some windows here in this pile. So, jackpot. So, we got that one? Yeah, we're gonna get this too. Good job. So, these are our new guys. We're gonna get this, this, and this. Look fine, glass insulation. See how they look like. We need to get some wood for the inside. So, so we're back in the sawmill. Let's get some more uh, basketball court. Let's go. You might remember that we have already used these boards from an old basketball court before, when renovating the yellow van. Lucky, they still have a big amount of them. It actually seems that no one around here really likes to work with it, since. It's not the easiest to work with. It's so sketchy. <laughs> it is. The amount is still the same as before, so that's good for us. Only downside, the good ones are at the bottom. So we are choosing all the boards. It's difficult to find boards that are without lines and stuff, so we stopped being picky about that. But we finally found out where the basketball court is from. It's from Tondela. Now that we have all the materials we need, time to place the windows we just got. At the same time we are also working on the basketball roof, getting close to make the big trailer ready for some rain. Here we are on a 
beautiful roof. Yesterday was a really productive day. We finished quite a lot. We have just this last piece here to fill up. We're gonna do that this morning and then we are gonna cut off the edges and square up the, the roof. So we didn't measure the length of the boards because I can now cut it everything off with a track saw. So I'm gonna measure and mark up where I have to cut and cut everything off flush with this beam with the track saw. That's enough. Yep. Yeah. So we're gonna finish putting the vapor barrier on. Uh, yeah, we're gonna put it on top and seal it with aluminium tape. And yeah, as fast as possible because this hot. thing gets hot fast. Okay, so welcome to a closed pig trailer. Finally, the pig trailer is almost waterproof. We installed three old aluminium windows and a big wooden one. All have double glass and a little aluminium strip on the bottom to guide the water away. We also installed a big old wooden door, put the rafters on the roof that hold up the basketball court from close by town. As you can see, it still has some stickers on it from the gym. We also installed the stair at the entrance and we have installed the foil on the walls. It's still rolled up as we have to put the installation first, but you will see that in the next updates. Subscribe, follow and see how we continue. Alright, so nice work on the pick trailer, we'll continue working on that. But for now, we're gonna finish up the road. We started this a few weeks ago, cleaning out the left side of the road for a fire exit. So in case everything burns down, we can safely go out. And now we're gonna continue cleaning the right side. Uh, very similar, also has a lot of mimosas, a lot of spiky bushes, but a big difference is it also has a lot of native trees and a nice view from our big old ruin. So it should give a good end result. But it's gonna be a lot of work, so we're gonna get some help. Okay, it's still early morning and some friends are gonna come because we have some friends locally living that really are willing to help. So we invited them for today and we will take on the second half of the road. So first a hot drink, gathering together and then we're gonna start.
Okay, today is the day that we're gonna take down these big mimosas because in the back there are many nature of trees that we want to give priority to grow. So these ones are gonna go down. Morning. We now have a different approach because we can't cut the trees so they will fall over this road. They will always fall behind. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to cut the trees and make them smaller when they're down. Okay, so I'm going to clear this first yeah, clear and we can work. The small one. As you can see, the, the job worked well. All of the oaks are nice and, and healthy and intact. So it works nice. Could have been worse, but at the end, you can see like the most is fair between the other two oaks. I have brambles and sodas and mimosas all over the place. So it's a lost battle, but every once in a while you have to clean a bit because it's too much. Some mimosas are very big, like this one, which just got cut down. This one is going to Hans to be used as firewood, I think. Another job done, you can see, no mimosas around, now we have a nice and clear space. The rest of the area to clear was mainly a brush cutting job. Nothing too special, but somehow satisfying to watch.
Okay guys, so we recently finished the side of the road. Let me show you the results now. So right now where I'm walking, you couldn't make a move, you couldn't get here. This was all fully overgrown, brambles, fern, every kinds of bushes. But as you can see, the space is fully open now and only the natives remain, um, which is very cool for them to thrive. We found or rediscovered these uh, fruit trees. We planted these last year, but they didn't have any space to grow. And now they are free and happy. Yes, yeah, so down here, after this slope, we did loads and loads of brush cutting here. And now it's just clean, neat and nice. This area, we also brush cut it a lot. We had to do some manual work to free up the natives as well. Um, Right now we have the neighbor's biological brush cutters. All right, so we tackled clearing uh, the sides of the roads. We had a lot of mimosa, brambles, bushes to defeat, but we won and uh, now the job is done. As you can see, it's beautiful. So we can enjoy the scenery while going back to base camp. So the road is now cleaned up, much safer in case of a fire. We also freed up the native trees so they can grow into big trees now, which is cool. And in general, the whole land here is now much easier to maintain because we can just keep it with a brush cutter low so it doesn't get wild again. So now we got a lot of mimosa and we're going to give a little upgrade to the office and it's involving one of our favorite things of you guys, Kevin. We're going to use the mimosa, some old jeans and a sewing machine to make something useful. So it's been a hot summer in camp and the windows let the sun get in and heats up the whole office. And we tried putting cork on the windows and the principle works, but this setup feels too improvised. So we thought, let's make some curtains. We're going to use some of the mimosas we cut before. The first stand will be used as a bar, so we make sure it's smooth. With the second trunk, we will create the support for the main bar. So we have this jeans material left over from the previous project and we are going to make a curtain out of it for the office. Done. 
So now we have some nice thick curtains that really keep the sun outside and don't heat up the building, which is good because it makes it a bit more comfortable to work here. All right, so that was it for this video. Next video, we're gonna continue working on the pick trailer and we're gonna build something special because it's a special episode because it's number 100. If you already wanna see that, make sure to subscribe on our Patreon so you can see it one week ahead. Or not, just subscribe on YouTube and you'll see it next week, same channel, same time. Thank you for watching. Ciao.